This is the Out of Time Film Podcast, where your hosts, Tom and John, discuss everything from blockbuster films to TV and games like there's no tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the Out of Time Film Podcast. My name is Tom and as always I'm joined with my co-host John. Hi. And this week we are talking about Madam Web. Spum is back, John. Oh yes, but I completely forgot that was the name for for this universe. Yeah, we're back, and we were so overjoyed for Morbius. And Morbius, oh, yeah. we we had a great time, you know, Morbius, and we were like, oh my god, we're gonna get a sequel. What's well, not a sequel? It's just it's called Madam Web. Yeah, and then we got Venom, we got Craven the Hunter, but yeah, we're talking about the one and only Madam Web. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna be eating good this year with three spum films i can't wait i mean how does this film exist how did we like who came up with this like, i just i like to imagine you know sony have their meeting and avi arad's like okay guys we've got to get on board with the mcu we've got to really catch up we're going to make our own universe no way home was a huge hit people want to see all these characters okay what's next I know. Let's make a film set during 2003 with young Ben Parker and Mary Parker and set it around Madam Web and three future spider people who are all older than Peter Parker by like 15 years. And we're going to make it part of the Spum universe, but it's not going to connect at all to any of the other Spum films. Why did they do this? I don't know. It is the most confusing aspect while watching this movie. I was just trying to think of excuses, like coming up, like, why did they do that weird plot line? They had like reshoots as well. Dakota Johnson was like, I had no idea what the original movie was going to be. But interestingly, the original movie, there was a, yeah, there was a Marvel tweet, I believe, that they had like different rewrites. Apparently, it was like going to be an original Terminator esque film for like, they were going to protect Mary Parker from this evil spider man and dakota johnson and the three other spider people were going to protect her but no this was a very completely different movie so i don't know how they got this to here that sounds like a much better film yeah the idea that we can actually see all of these characters as their comic book hero personas not as teenagers like we actually get to experience them you know in the outfits like you know being heroes and then like the idea of we're going to use a bit of time travel and there is an ongoing problem that sony has been trying to do ever since the Amazing Spider-Man films, where they try to kind of like mythologize Peter Parker's origin story as Spider-Man. They kind of try to tie it in with, so like in Amazing Spider-Man, it was like, okay, so Richard Parker actually used his own blood when developing the Spider-Venom. So the only person who the Venom could actually work on and turn to Spider-Man is Peter Parker. He's the only person who actually could become that Spider-Man. He was destined to become. And it's kind of like here as well. It's like there's this trajectory of the future that Ezekiel is trying to avoid and Madam Web, Cassandra, she knows what's going to happen and we're not into spoilers yet but the third act of this film somewhat revolves around the birth of Peter Parker. Wh- what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not that, joking. That is this, such this a is crazy premise. Half of it is like we've got to get Mary Parker to the hospital because she's giving birth to Peter. This is the catalyst for the entire like final battle. Really? Yeah, that happens. And then Peter's father is gone somewhere and we're like, oh, okay, he's gone. Because like, he's a too... spy. Like, yeah, because isn't... he's a spy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's just so stupid. Why would you need to involve that? And it's like trying to heavily, heavily imply towards the audience. It's like, oh my God, it's Peter Parker. Oh my God, he's going to be born. This sequence was just so weird and out of place. I mean, this film is out of place, but we just don't know. Oh my God, we're not into spoilers just yet, but it just really confused me. Why do we need to know the catalyst for this whole thing for Peter Parker? The weird thing is that Ben Parker, he just accepts it. He just accepts like what's happening right now. Mary and Ben, they were like, yeah, we accept this crazy thing with the spider thing. They literally saw Ezekiel and they were like, oh my God, who's him? And then they don't even look back at it ever again it's like oh my god what could it be for the sentence 
with great power comes with power. <laughs> they do a riff on great power and great responsibility a couple of times, and it's like, guys, you're not being clever. This is like, you know, just stop. This is kind of about. It feels like the prophecy has finally been fulfilled. Like in 2014, we had the ending of Amazing Spider-Man 2, where Mr. Fears walks through the basement of Origins, and it's kind of like the Sony is so desperately wanting to be like, okay, in the same film, we have to introduce Green Goblin and Electro and the Rhino, and we want to be I, I, even. Black Cat is in that film and you know like if you think about the wider things that even they cut they're like we want to do the return of Richard Parker and introduce MJ there are so many things that film wanted to do and Sony very obviously wanted to form this universe and that did crash and burn but now they're doing it and it almost feels like it's like finally we finally hit like they, they've come full circle into this ridiculous universe and apparently so there were reports that this film was originally conceived to be part of the amazing spider-man universe and it kind of makes sense like it feels very much like it some of the more stupid yeah. things that those films would do you know, i like the amazing spider-man films i think that at their core they really understand what it means to make a good spider-man story but especially the second one has a lot of stupid stuff about as i say about like that kind of like making peter parker's origin like destiny and this feels like part of that it feels like it should be a continuation but it isn't it's a film that kind of exists to connect to other things it's like oh my god we're gonna set up these characters for the future but it's like you haven't given us a reason to care in the present about these characters and there's just so many things that are like you know there's a kind of a knowing cheek that the film has where it's kind of like Haha, well yeah yeah bloody know he's gonna be spider-man one day and it's like okay they never give us a reason to care about anything other than the future like the one of the final lines in the film are just like the best thing about the future is that it hasn't happened yet and it's like is that the best thing about the, i don't think that is the best thing about like the future surely we want things to be happening now we don't like yeah. <laughs> you, you haven't given us a reason to care about anything in this film you've just been like oh get ready for the sequel no, I, I really doubt there's even gonna be a sequel i, I don't like, want a sequel i, I come i'm on. good I was just so surprised that we sat down, we watched the movie, we knew it was bad, and we were like laughing at the most horrendous things in the movie, especially for that line as well. We were like, what? The future? We, we, we don't want this. We don't want this at all. And they're trying so hard to do something differently with like the concept with Cassandra, seeing the future, but it's like they don't even explore that concept a lot. They just like have her show it and it's like, oh my God, I can see it. And she doesn't really have character arc and it's like okay i can see the future but what do i do with it that's what she does the movies try so hard to like show her that she has this character development and then at the end she just becomes like a ghost or something i don't know the film doesn't explain it she just becomes a ghost and then she just saves the teenagers and okay i think i feel like we were like really... <laughs> We've basically already gone into spoilers, so I will I will say full spoilers ahead for anyone who hasn't seen it. Madam Webb, briefly explain the plot for those who don't know. Cassandra Webb is a New York City paramedic who starts to show signs of clairvoyance. Forced to confront revelations about her past, she must protect three young women from a mysterious adversary who wants them dead. Sure. What? I'm sorry. That, okay. that is the film, that, I guess. That um, is the film. Wow. Yeah. That is... <laughs> What? So, yeah, right, okay, so one of the things in this film that maybe confused me the most was Ezekiel as the villain. Yeah, the crazy thing is that Ezekiel just gets killed by a Pepsi sign. That's it. <laughs> he just gets killed by a Pepsi oh sign. Oh my god. God. Yeah. So you're talking yeah. about these reshoots, right? Like you're saying that this film was heavily reshot. Something yeah. was happening with this guy, man. Every yeah. time that he's in his lair and he's talking, you can barely see his mouth moving. And oh, it's I see all... his face. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Like, the lighting is so dark that you can barely see like any movement on his mouth. But there's enough movement to know that what he's saying does not sync up. And here's what I think happened. I think that they didn't even when they were shooting the film, they didn't even know what he was going to say. So they just shot random like shots of him, you know, just like saying things. And then they got him to just ADR it all as soon as they knew actually what his motivation was. And his motivation is just very strange. So like he has these dreams about these people killing him. And then somehow with this 
facial recognition software. He can identify the faces in his dream. Basically, it's the... I don't know how that works. It's the thing from Meet the Robinsons. Have you seen Meet the Robinsons? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The main character, like, creates a machine that can see what's in your dreams. You can see your, like, oh. heartless oh, yeah. desire. Yeah. And he basically uses that machine to find out who these people are, find them when they're teenagers, and then try and kill them. And then because he, he stole, like, a spider when he was in the Amazon researching spiders before her mum died um before that he <laughs> takes a spider and then he becomes like pseudo spider-man like there's an incredible incredible shot where dakota johnson <laughs> where cassandra is like i need to get you out of here right now and, and the kids are like why why should we trust you and she's like there's your proof and she points and then he's just crawling on the ceiling and it's such a funny shot because it's just like there's not really much build up to it it doesn't yeah. look cool or anything it's just like a man just in, out in, in, in this suit just scuttling across yeah. the ceiling like he's in the exorcist or something it's just very weird why does he need the spider god knows man it like I, that's th- exactly exactly it just kills the researcher and is like oh my god the spider i found the spider guys oh i'm pregnant yeah she goes to the amazon rainforest while she's pregnant but then the film later reveals that the reason why is that she has this disease that will affect her baby that baby is cassandra and she needs this spider to help her there's this whole kind of like i guess the culmination of Cassandra's arc is that she goes back to Peru and she meets the tribe who helped her mum give birth and these are like these kind of like native spider people. Again, we're kind of giving the the origin of Spider-Man this kind of like backstory this huge like mythology. It's not just a spider that got out and bit some kid. It's like, no, no, this is like a mystical tribe of people who for centuries have used these spiders and gained incredible superpowers and then because of this series of events it kind of comes down to Peter Parker. Anyway, and and she she gets like this vision and she finds out like all these things about her mom and she's like wow I've hated you for all these years and it's like really because we ha- hate literally you. you haven't spoken about your mom once in this film you just We're talked always... about being fostered it's like yeah. dude like yeah where's the character she only opens her mom's briefcase of full of memories and she just looked at him and by the way she looked through them like everything and like all the pictures and you know what she can see like with the mum's drawings and stuff she doesn't even see the guy ezekiel she just like sees ezekiel on the train and then and then she goes back to her apartment and she's like oh my god ezekiel was my my mum in the rainforest before she died (laughs) researching spiders researching spiders um, I want to say that line from the trailer, that historic line, wasn't even in the film. Yeah, disappointing. Um, disappointing. Hugely disappointing. I want to say, to compare this to other Spum films, this is pretty bad. But I must this say, it's not quite as bad as Morbius. Now, I do think that Morbius was utterly atrocious. And I do think that this film is also pretty bad. But I did find it funny. And Morbius, oh, it just it wasn't funny. It was just depressing. Like, you know, Morbius did have Matt Smith, who is just amazing and everything. But it wasn't fun. Whereas this, I do have to give it credit. I was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I was it was laughing so stupid. The dialogue. dialogue. Oh, my God. The dialogue. The dialogue. Oh, my oh Jesus. Oh, my God. How did we get to this point? I'm not joking. It was two or three minutes into the film where we get a series of bad dialogue. I mean, genuinely bad dialogue. I don't know how they've been delivered. What was the direction for this? I have no idea. It was like the room's level, you know, Tommy Wise, I was the room. It was just like on that level with the dialogue. It was just like, what is going on? So there's some really crazy lines. One of them I can especially remember was how can anyone flip off an ambulance? Jesus. And then we <laughs> get, oh my God. Oh yeah, this other thing as well. It's just blatantly like telling her how she feels like, oh, I hate family stuff. Why do we get family stuff cards or something like that? And then there was this whole barbecue session. There was that scene about guessing Mary's baby name. I don't know why that's a game. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, in this baby shower, there's this whole moment. They're trying to make it seem like Cassandra hates kids and she hates people. And like, I guess kind of part of her arc is that she becomes this like mother figure to these kids. But she's kind of like, oh yeah, no, my mom died in childbirth. I mean, no, I mean, it's kind of rare. I mean, actually not really. I mean like, oh, 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 I'm so, I'm so, I'm so awkward. Oh, haha, you guys are so stupid. And it's like, what are you, what are you doing? It's no wonder that the marketing for this film has been 
insanely crazy. Like they've oh, really no. been trying yeah. to make this marketing like oddly sexual and horny. If you watch some of the videos of Dakota Johnson or Sydney Sweeney speaking about the film, like you know, Dakota Johnson was on SNL and she was like, This film has superheroes and Sydney Sweeney. It's like if AI made your boyfriend's favorite movie. They're really trying to get onto the fact that like that, oh, this this film's gonna make you really happy, and like, it's gonna appeal to a kind of like sexual thing. It's like what I don't know why. Like, but it makes sense that they are marketing it based on that because what else do they have to market it based on? There's literally nothing here that would make people say, oh yeah, I want to watch that because it's just so nothing. It, genuinely it's crazy. Nothing. And and, and there's, there's, they're just these super strange, like so, like, so there's this guy that we meet at the barbecue who's kind of, he's, pre- oh, he's pressing his burgers and then later on he dies quite, you know, like, in, in, in a car crash and, and Cassandra's like, no, oh my God. No, no. Oh, it's like I the biggest weeded? moment. It's like poorly no. developed side character. No, and it's just like this guy, man. We barely knew him. All we knew is that he pressed burgers and that he was like <laughs> a, a paramedic. It's like, wh- really? You're gonna make us? You're gonna do like a huge like emotional send off for this guy? Because he's just the guy. He's not he important. Is, at he was all. only there. I'm guessing for a minute. He was there for a minute and he yeah, gets he's killed off. Barely any screen time. Like I don't yeah, even barely know his any name. screen time. And then we have such a weird plot line with Cassandra having taken two teenagers and then the police just reports it like it was a kidnapping. So I don't know what that storyline was going on. It was just like very weird. Is that ever resolved? Does no, she that's ever... not resolved. <laughs> Do the yeah. authorities ever find out that she didn't actually like, you know, that she's not actually a kidnapper? Yeah, it's not resolved at all. And Ben accepts it somehow. Like, yeah, Ben's just like, I don't know what this is, but I'll help you. And it's like, what? Why? Oh my God. I just realized the other thing as well with Ezekiel. He tries to fall in love with this security woman, oh, yeah. national national security. I don't know what it was, but she gets tricked. And then Ezekiel just needs security to look through, which is so weird, especially when you're talking about like this machine to find out the stuff in your dreams and find out the identity of the Spider-Man. So I'm guessing like that'd be like a weird machine you know, like if there's a spider man that you don't know and it's like well there is there's that identity of that so i don't know why that was in that it's all oh my god the whole thing is it. just so strangely structured as well i think some of the music was decent in this film and there are some interesting you know pieces of cinematography this film actually has the same cinematographer as no way home and it's kind of night and day. Like this film does actually have some interesting shots and compositions and movements. And it feels a lot more like an actual film than No Way Home is, you know. No Way Home was made in a cupboard. <laughs> like, you know, that film, nobody was on the same set at the same time. But this one, at least there is that kind of feeling that there is some sort of realness to it. But the editing is so strange and so weird and chopped up. And again, it, it makes me just think that they had one film and then they chopped it up loads. Like the beginning of the film tells the story of oh my God, Cassandra's no, mom not this, not this incident, and <laughs> Ezekiel in, in the Amazon, right? We get this whole story where, you know, like they're looking at the spiders and Ezekiel steals one and, and shoots her. And then like the spider tribe comes and helps her give birth, etc. And then later on in the film, Cassandra finds it out and we get the exact same sequence of events just kind of chopped up and a little bit more like snappy why do we even need the opening like you could have at least made some sort of mystery with what happened to her mother and why does she have these powers whereas we the audience know immediately from the beginning that she has these powers because her mum was bitten by the spider and about the spider people as well yeah it's like we knew all of this and so that whole bit where Cassandra finds it out for herself, it's not like anything new to the audience. It's just like, okay, cool, next scene. I don't understand why that's in there. I don't understand why, like you're saying, like, why did we have to introduce Ezekiel in the modern day, like where he sleeps with this security woman and then like kills her and takes the... None of that really yeah. makes sense. Like, why did we it have to have it so so Cassandra like had met all of the teenagers? Like she meets Maddie when she flips her off. She meets Julia at the, at the hospital and she meets Anya at her building they live in the same building it's like all of these things are just like what does this add nothing and the most confusing thing was like how can they connect everything together with the three teenagers how are you going to connect them all together but just does it in such a weird way and there was no character development no one has an arc in this in order to get some character dynamic or character development with each other cassandra teaches the teenagers how to do CPR? Yes. Uh, oh god, that was such a weird scene. Yeah, it was such a weird and unnecessary scene. 
it only lasted about it felt like forever like three minutes or something i don't know like three minutes or two minutes and it was just them doing cpr just that i'm not joking just that did it serve the story it comes back and it saves cassandra oh and then one of the teenagers know how to swim like and save cassandra underneath all the damage i don't know the wobble the the, the, the wobble of the the building or you know something to collapse or the sign that collapsed into the sea bank i don't know into the river and then they save her and i'm like oh we didn't know she could swim underneath <laughs> like so much pressure of water I didn't know how the film was going to set up with the three teenagers going to have powers in the future. Yeah. Which, the trailer, I'm not joking, the trailer highlights that so heavily. They were like, okay, they're going to get powers. And mm. I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be interesting. You know, how are they going to get powers? Is Cassandra going to teach them? No, it only happens at the very, very, very end with no explanation. Yeah, e even even then it's like when we see the kids get their powers, it, we're only seeing it in flash forwards. Again, it's like the future and it's like, well, well, okay, I don't care. Genuinely, the costumes for those three are impeccable. They look so cool, but they're just done in these really murky flashbacks and aren't really given anything interesting. And genuinely, we could have a really, really cool story with these three people. The Terminator idea, that sounds great. I have no idea why they didn't do that. And the kids who play the teenagers, they're all decent, you know? Like, they're all, yeah, I say kids, they decent, they're all yeah. adults, but, they're, you know, they're good. Like, they do the job well, and they're believable, and they have decent chemistry, and the script isn't doing them any favours, but, you know, they're, they're fine. They are fine. And... I think that they could do a good job as these characters. And, and, you know, potentially we'll see them again. Who knows what will happen? Who knows where Spum will go? But if we do see them again, it's kind of like, okay, we have this opportunity to actually now tell a story about them as heroes rather than just doing this stupid whatever the hell this film was. But I mean, you know, there wasn't a post credit scene at least. So, yeah. you know, it's 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 a it's a merciful film. It doesn't it's not over 2 hours, it, you know. It, yeah. It goes by fairly breezy. It's just it's just nothing. Yeah, it's just nothing. And Emma Wobbett, she plays as Mary Parker. She only appears in it in yes. like three times, <laughs> three uh -huh. times in the film. And she gets nothing at all. Like, oh yeah, Ben Parker, he gets nothing at all. He's just why, like... Why are they even in there? It I doesn't don't make any know. sense. It doesn't serve the story any purpose. There is no clear indication of like... Is there a character development? Is there some sort of like idea that Ben Parker will come up with the if great power comes with great some responsibility? No. He's an uncle yeah, now. It's uncle. all the he's fun with now. none of the responsibility. Woohoo. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, he's he's happy. Madam Web doesn't have a realized world building world. Like, is this the Marvel we know? Is there like some sort of indication this is like the same Spider-Man universe? I mean, it doesn't name drop Peter Parker's name. It only just has <laughs> Ben Parker, Mary Parker, and how are we supposed to know this is some universe that we know? Is it a different universe? Is it indirect across the Spider-Verse? Is it something that connects everything somehow? Is Madam Web in the center of the Spider-Verse? Oh my what? god, this is going to be crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> Madam Web is going to be in every Marvel film going forward, just in the background of every scene. Oh yeah, and she becomes blind at the end. She does. Yeah, she, yeah. She, she, she dons the iconic red glasses and wheelchair. Because the plot says so, basically. Because the wait, future wait. says so. Not because anything meaningful is happening in the present, but because the future dictates that oh. we must have this kind of character. Yeah, it's just, just ridiculous. Yeah, Absolutely, I mean, just lunacy. There was no development. It, it was nothing. This was just nothing. The film was Cassandra Webb the hero the entire time? Did she know the weakness of Ezekiel? Did she learn anything? Did she learn anything? Well, Did she perhaps... even make any mistakes? Like she never does anything wrong. No, no the mistakes. Film. No mistakes. Like... That is a great question. Did she make mistakes? The most you could argue that she makes mistakes is in timelines that don't happen. But those timelines don't happen. Like you know, I don't, I don't know. Oh, that concept know, is confusing man. as well. Does she go back in time to her body? Because this reminds me of an anime series called Steins Gate where you go back to your body like 15 minutes ago like somewhere in that story is confusing to talk about but this one i was like wait how does it work does her mind go back in time to like five seconds early or does she see the future in that timeline i don't get it i just don't get that concept at all in this movie they don't explain it at all so that is madam web i'm gonna give it 
Yeah, it's it, one. It, it's it. Oh, you you go you going one. Yeah, that's it, fair. Yeah. I'm gonna give it two out of ten. Not as bad as Morbius because it was funny, but Spum. Why are we doing this? Spum. Um, I'm sorry. But... Why do we have that name? It's such a like it's weird. It's the Sony Pictures say. universe of Marvel movies, of course, of course, of Spum. course, of course. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we 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 got Craven, so we'll see you in August, Spum. <laughs> see see you soon. Um, thank you everybody for listening. If you're listening on YouTube and you enjoyed it, you can like and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you're on Spotify, you can follow us and give us a five star review if you think we're worthy. And next week, no more spum. We are revisiting June part one. Yeah, baby. Come on. Yeah. Come that's on. the kind of thing that well, that's that's what we want to do. That's the oh, that's the I'm real so cinema right there. Oh, yes. Yeah, and you can send us an email at asktimefilmpod at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts on June part one. Ask us any questions and we will answer it right here on the podcast next week. Yes, and you can follow us on Instagram at Out of Time Film Pod to see our incredible thumbnails from Zane Asvel on Twitter for more thoughts from Tom and TikTok to see edited clips, which are all on Instagram reels and YouTube shorts. And you can find links to that all in the description below. Thanks to L. James Mayer for the excellent theme and Ren Phillips for vocals as always. And I think that's everything. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, well, <laughs> another, right. another, another week, another bad comic book film. Oh my God. Argyle. Do you remember Argyle, Tom? Of course I remember Argyle. This wasn't as bad as Argyle. Because, yeah. This I mean, they're both, they're both basically the same for me, but like, yeah, at least this was a little bit funny. Okay. It almost had like the same thing with like, the film is so bad, it's funny. So I, mm. I was, I'm glad for that. So Yeah, me yeah. too. Take what you're giving. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye.